hallelujah what first 2016 I'm excited I'm excited I'm excited God is about to do a new thing in your life God is going to steer you up tonight you are going to receive power from the Holy Ghost tonight hallelujah as the word of God is preached you will receive a fresh unction to function hallelujah father we give you praise father we give you praise you can have your seat this morning <laughs> you can have your seat tonight hallelujah praise God forevermore hey the Bible says in Mark chapter 10 and verse 27 but Jesus looked at them and said with men it is impossible hallelujah with men it is impossible but not with God for with God all things are possible hallelujah with men you might not be capable but with God you are capable hallelujah with men you might not be able but with you are able hallelujah and over this next three days we're going to spend some time to dig deep into the word of God to explore hallelujah to you know enter into his word to re get that word revealed to us even more so that we can see God in this light like we've never seen him before so that we can see the endless possibilities in God like we've never seen them before so that those situations that have been daunting to you can bow at your feet at the revelation of the word of God and the person and the ability of God hallelujah come on if you are still here shout hallelujah, hallelujah. glory to God so I want you to get excited. I want you to get excited. I want you to use yourself to the Holy Spirit. Jesus said when he's come and will guide us into all truth. He will take from what is the Father's and he will reveal it to us. So I want you to yield yourself to the Holy Spirit over this weekend. Allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you. The ministers will be speaking several words, but the Holy Ghost will be trying to communicate something to you. We'll be trying to give you keys, reveal keys to you that will help you break forth into endless possibilities. So this weekend, open up your heart to receive from what the Lord is saying. He said, what eye has not seen, what ear has not heard, what has not yet come into the heart of men concerning the things that God has prepared for those who love him God has revealed to us by his spirit he says he has given us his spirit that we might know the things that have been freely given to us of God hallelujah so there are things that the Holy Ghost will deliver into your hands and have been freely given to you already father we give you praise father we give you praise all right to get us started this weekend please can you put your hands together and help me welcome Pakule Olusoya, hallelujah, as he brings us God's word tonight, amen, glory to God, hallelujah, glory to God, praise God forevermore, amen, are you ready for God's word tonight, are you ready, for, have you got your pens, have you got your Bibles, have you got your, your writing materials, hallelujah, glory to God. Come on, lift up your hands and just worship the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. Just blame name. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you praise. We are ready to receive your word. We are ready to receive your word. We declare that every situation bows at your word. We declare that every circumstance bows at your word. Father, we give you all the glory. Hallelujah. Have a great time tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. For a moment I was thinking, where is the mic? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're welcome to the service this evening. And I trust you are enjoying God's fullness. Amen. Can we just, you know, just have a minute of prayer? Father, we thank you for this wonderful opportunity in your presence. Thank you, Father, because your power will be made available today to heal, to touch your people at the point of your need. Thank you for inspiration. Thank you, Lord, because the faith of your people would not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the demonstration of your power. Father, we thank you for your word, Lord, for every person today, Lord, that will transform lives, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray.
Can I have a shout from the house this morning? Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, for the next few minutes, I'll be talking about, you know, all things are possible, but I'll be sort of tackling it from the angle of, amen. Hallelujah. You know, that passage, uh, Mark 10, 27 says, you know, Jesus looked unto them and said, with men it is impossible, but not with God, for with God all things are possible. Hallelujah. I'm going to be relying on the, because I don't want to be reading from my, uh, from my Bible, I'll be relying on a projector to help me, so that will be a lot faster. It says, with men it is impossible. Hallelujah. It said, but not with God, but with all things are possible. Hallelujah. It says, all things are possible. It says, you know, hallelujah. And I, I just remembered when uh, Kenny Copeland said a man, there was a guy, was a very studious guy, and he did a study on the word all. Amen. And when he did the study, he did the study of the word all in different large Hebrew, Greek, everything. And at last he came to the conclusion, the word all means all. Hallelujah. When he said that, I was like, seriously. <laughs> I, could, I could have told him that before he started. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, all things are possible with God. Amen. Now, if you look throughout the Bible, you know, the, the devil is always trying to devise counterfeit to God. Amen. If you check throughout the Bible, you know, the truth himself, Jesus himself said this. He said, with men, it is impossible. He said, but not with God. Hallelujah. He's making us aware of two systems. Hallelujah. One hankered by man. Amen. And you know, in the Bible, when the Bible talks about man in the Bible, it's talking about natural man. Amen. So he said, without, he said, with men, it is impossible. There's a system of man on the earth. He said, it is limited, it is finite. And that's why it's impossible. There are impossibilities with it. He said, but not with God. He said, with God, all things are possible. Amen. I mean, if you want to go in deeper, you know, when he was talking about things in the Bible, he was saying things that are seen and things that are not seen. Hallelujah. So he's saying both physical things and spiritual things. There is no impossibility in God. That's what he means. Hallelujah. No, in the natural system, in the world system, there, there are a lot of limitations. Amen. So, because there are limitations, there are limitations. Amen. There are impossibilities. But with God, all things are possible. Hallelujah. You know, you, you will never get to a point in God where it will say, okay, I will come back to you. Hallelujah. It's not possible because, you know, the Bible calls him the most high God. Hallelujah. He is God, you know, when he was talking about wisdom, he said, he didn't say he's the wisest God. He said, the God, the only wise. Hallelujah. So how can I dare be in possibility with him? Amen. So we are talking of a God that is infinite. Hallelujah. You know, when I was in maths in school, we say, oh, if you take away one billion from infinity, it's still infinity. Amen. You know, God is so big that you can't contain him. So when he says, with God, nothing is impossible. Hallelujah. There is no limits in God. There is no end with God. There is no, you know, it's not possible, hallelujah. And that's why when Bible, when the Bible talks, when it talks about vision and everything, there are no limits. Hallelujah. Because the God we serve is a limitless God. Hallelujah. You see, man is always fascinated by the supernatural. You know, if you see all those all those movies, they're always talking about someone who has, you know, they're trying to get someone who has limitless powers. 
someone who has powers that supersedes the natural hallelujah man is fascinated by the supernatural why because when man fell he was limited his potential was capped hallelujah but we are talking about a god who links you back with endless possibilities hallelujah so when jesus came jesus you know the truth himself he said look with men it's impossible but not with god with god all things are possible hallelujah amen he says i read my notes it says the natural is a realm of limitations and impossibilities he said the god realm is a supernatural realm it's the realm of possibilities and the miraculous hallelujah amen and when we are talking about this god you know in uh, jeremiah 32 17 he said there is nothing too hard for him for me hallelujah there is no there is no you know there is no limit to what he can do hallelujah amen we have that he says behold you have made the heavens and the heart by your great power and astrid ham there is nothing too hard for you hallelujah and in verse 27 he was telling the people he said is there anything too hard for me hallelujah so there is no limit in god it's not possible hallelujah there is no impossibilities in the realm of the soul once you are connected to jehovah there is nothing like impossibilities amen hallelujah hallelujah amen now is you see by our connection with god amen okay i don't want to run ahead of myself now amen and now uh, john 16 32 amen hallelujah john 16 33 brother hallelujah amen jesus was saying he said in the world you have tribulations but he said he said these things i have spoken unto you that in me you will have peace but in the world you will have tribulations but be of good cheers but be, i have overcome the world hallelujah so he's saying in the world system there is there will be tribulation hallelujah so he's talking about two systems one the world system and one god system he said once you are connected to the world system you're going to be having limitations you'll be having impossibilities but he said but to god he said all things are possible that's the realm infinite impossibilities is the realm of god um i, I checked the, uh, the, the the meaning of the word tribulation uh for my favorite uh dictionary the noel webster dictionary it says uh tribulation means severe affliction the stress of life and vexations and he says it often denotes trouble and distresses which proceed from persecution it says when this when uh tribulation or persecution arises okay was quoted in the bible there's tribulation and persecution arising for the world's sake and he quoted uh, matthew 17 he said in, and, he, and he also quotes uh, john 16. but you see the, the main thing is this you're gonna have distress you're gonna have trouble anything that is contrary to life hallelujah you know john 10 10 says it says the thief cometh not but to st to steal to kill and to destroy he said but i am come that you may have life and have it to the full until they were flowing hallelujah so in the world you have because you know the bible says in first corinthians 4 4 it says the devil is a god of this world so because the devil you know the devil doesn't have any power amen so if you are connected to a system you will be limited you have impossibilities amen but if you are connected to the god hallelujah of the universe jehovah the one who created the heavens and the heart and the one who is your father and my father hallelujah once you are connected to you are connected to the source of limited impossibilities oh, sorry possibilities <laughs> hallelujah amen you are connected to the realm of 
unlimited possibilities. Amen. Hallelujah. So he says, when you are connected to God, that's the God that can answer all things. There's nothing that is too difficult for him to do. Hallelujah. Once you realize your connection, hallelujah. When we were doing uh, this week in the small group, we were talking about your identity, who you have. I mean, who you are, then who you have, then what you have. Hallelujah. Your identity in God as a new creation. Amen. Then who you have, the God you are connected to. Then the resources, then what you have. The resources, your spiritual resources. By the time you have an understanding of all those things, you realize there is nothing impossible to God. Hallelujah. Because connected to the God of infinite possibilities. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's open our Bibles to our, let's turn to our 2 Corinthians 5.17. Amen. You know, he said, if any man be in Christ, he says, he is a new creation. All things are passed away. He said, behold, all things are become new. Amen. You know, I used to read this verse. I meditated upon it. I mean, I, mean, I just meditated. Until one day, I moved to the next verse. You know, I just speak, you know, I, I used to pick verses. Just pick one verse, meditate on it. So later, and I said, okay, let me just go down. And I just saw verse 18. And he said, and all things are of God. I was thinking, man, they shouldn't have added that verse to 18. It should have been part of 17. That was the last part of verse 17. He said, all these things that you have been recreated, they are of God. Amen. Hallelujah. You see, when Adam sinned, in the, in the back, you know, in uh, Romans 5 12, it says, If by one man's sin, death reigned by all, how much more dead have received the abundance of grace and the beauty of righteousness shall reign as kings in life? Christ Jesus. So when man sinned, hallelujah, when man sinned, it said, Death, there was the reign of death, hallelujah. So man became limited, hallelujah, he was cut off from the source. Of infinite possibilities hallelujah and the devil is a devil who steals kills and destroys so he became limited in what he could do hallelujah the only way it could be reconnected to the source of infinite possibilities was via the covenant hallelujah and we saw that with Israel God had to cut the covenant with Abraham he wanted to bring the covenant back into the heart so he found a man and cut the covenant with him and through that man came the nation of Israel and we saw what happened is that when they left Egypt through signs and wonders why because they were connected to the God of infinite possibilities hallelujah you know when, when they left Egypt I, I was, I was, um, I saw a documentary, and the guy was saying, he, he's not, I don't think it's true, you know, that how can a bunch of slaves come out with have gold? Yeah, I said, yeah, that's the point. They were connected to a God of infinite impossibilities. They left, he said, go and tell your neighbors, tell them to give you their gold. So they went to them, knocked and said, good afternoon, sir. Yeah, I'm very sorry to bother you, but can I have your gold? So God would have been thinking, what? <laughs> Hallelujah. But you know, if God gives you a command, I tell you, you better go. Hallelujah. And they came out of the land of slavery with gold. You know, these guys, don't have, they don't have any house, anything, but they had gold. Yeah, yeah, we are going. And they had a man who was leading them, Moses, who was connected to the God of infinite possibilities. Hallelujah. I mean, they will get to a Red Sea. And, you know, those guys will say, okay, what's happening now? And Moses will like, okay, what's happening? So we'll go to God. God, what's happening? He said, stretch the road. Okay, we'll come back. Stretch the road. The land will open. They will pass through. Those guys will be like, man, great. You know, they will get to a desert. No food. Moses will go back to God. God, what are we going to do? He said, don't worry. Tomorrow. Everybody go into your camp tomorrow. There will be food. They come back to there is food. 
Wow. And the guy said, no, you know, we used to eat, eat KFC in Egypt. Merci. They will come to Moses again. Moses will be like, bring you these guys. You are not, okay, I'll go back. We'll go back. God, what is it? He said, tomorrow, I'll bring God square. Hey, Amen. He said, you'll come back to them. Guys, there will be KFC tomorrow. Hey, Amen. And tomorrow, there's KFC. Hallelujah. Why? The guy was connected to a God of infinite possibilities. Hallelujah. Amen. So, I mean, we are in a covenant with God. Amen. We are new creations. We are in Christ. New creations. We are connected to God. Hallelujah. I mean, I was meditating on 2 Corinthians 5 17 and I saw that, man, I am connected to the God of all possibilities. So I was like, man, forget it. Amen. There's nothing like impossible with God. Amen. Hallelujah. There's nothing too difficult for God. Hallelujah. You know, there was a woman, I, I had this uh, story uh, some time ago, a woman who, she was dying of, and she came in contact with the man of God, uh, Novel Hayes. And Novel Hayes didn't have the time to, you know, teach her. So, you know, look, she gave her the scriptures, said, look, take the scriptures, be confessing it every day until you see something happen. So the woman, you know, just got born again, didn't know anything, started confessing it. Hallelujah. You know, he had, uh, he had a dining table, a dining room. So we'll be confessing it. And she started discovering that the more she confessed it, the better she was getting. And she was thinking, man, this thing seems to be working. So she will be start confessing it, confessing it, just confessing it. You know, she didn't know anything. So one night she, she was tired. She was not told the husband. The husband was like, have you done your confession? He said, no, I'm tired. They were like, no, carry it ah, No, 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 you, you have to. Even if you are tired, you have to do it. So she continued doing it. And after a period, about maybe six months or so, she got completely healed of cancer. So, you know, they were now thinking, man, if this thing works for cancer, it should work for something else, right? They didn't have kids. So they now got confession for kids. They started confessing now. And lo and behold, she became pregnant and she had kids. Hallelujah. Why? You, they were connected to the God of all possibilities. Amen. Hallelujah. You know what Jesus was saying here? He said, you know, with men it's impossible. He said, but not with God. For with God, all things are possible. Amen. But now in Mark 9, 23, Jesus was now talking about what makes possibility in peace possible amen hallelujah he said wow i can't believe it <laughs> my time is up <laughs> hallelujah amen wow i thought i spent like five minutes i'm like that's 18 minutes man <laughs> Alan, I, I vowed this year that i won't over, overrun my time amen <laughs> amen Hallelujah. So he had, Jesus told them, Amen. He said, God, all things are possible. But yeah, he said, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believe it. So what makes impossibilities possible is faith. Hallelujah. And not just faith, the God kind of faith. Hallelujah. Now we just read 2 Corinthians 5 17. Jesus said, I'm come. No, okay, I'm sorry. John 10 10. He said, I'm come that you may have the God kind of life and that you may have it to the full until there is an overflowing. Come that you may have and enjoy the. People say, Oh, it's the God kind of life. Yeah, the God kind of life is talking about this the things that make God God. Hallelujah. God is a holy God. So that's why he gave us, he said, look, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. He said, you know, God is love. Hallelujah. That's why he said in Romans 5, 5, he says the love of God has been shed everywhere in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. Amen. And Jesus said, look, have the God kind of faith. Amen. So God has given us his kind of faith. 
Hallelujah. Romans 12, 3 says, we have the measure of faith when we got born again. Hallelujah. Amen. So we have the God kind of faith on our inside so that we can do the impossible. Amen. Hallelujah. One day I was meditating and, you know, the Lord told me, I just had the scripture come to me. You know the guy at the, uh, uh, at the, uh, uh, the Siloam, is it, is it the pool of Siloam, hallelujah. You know, Jesus had, you know, you know, a lot of people think Jesus was the son of God, so that's why he did all the things he did. You know, hallelujah. Jesus, when he was here on the earth, operated as a, a prophet under the whole covenant. Amen. So he was a carrier of the power of God. Amen. The burden removing, yoke destroying power. Of God. So he'd be good, yeah? And that power was upon him. And the guys who knew that, like the woman of uh, the woman uh, with the Israel blood, who saw that and believed, said, okay, there's something upon this man. If I touch him, I'll be healed. So he went and touched him and he was healed. Jesus wasn't involved in it. Hallelujah. And when Jesus looked back, what did Jesus say? Jesus said, your faith has made you whole. Hallelujah. He didn't say, oh, man, today I'm in a good, you know, woke up on the right side of my bed. So the, the anointing of God flowed to you. No, it was independent of Jesus. The woman with her faith went and touched it and tapped into the power of God. Hallelujah. That is what God has given us. The God kind of faith to tap into his unlimited resources so that we can be bailed out out of the corruption that is in the world. Hallelujah. Amen. So you go to work, they tell you they are going to retrench people. Hallelujah. You go with your faith and go with your connection, with your God kind of faith and tap into your resources in the word of God and you will escape. Hallelujah. That corruption that is in the world. Hallelujah. Amen. Look, you know, a man of God said it this way. He said, God has given you this book. 66 book, books. Hallelujah. And he said, help yourself. Hallelujah. God is not the one determining who gets things. Hallelujah. God is not the one determining who gets miracles. It is hope. Hallelujah. Now, in the book of uh, in Mark 9, 23, where he was talking about uh, a, a man brought um, um, his son to the disciples. They wanted, to, I mean, they wanted to cast out the devil. They couldn't cast him out. Jesus came and Jesus was angry. Now, Jesus wasn't angry. He was angry because he said, oh, thou faithless generation. The emphasis was on what? Faith. It wasn't on him. It was like, why couldn't you do it? Hallelujah. And later I was talking to the father. I said, oh, can you help us? No, he said, if you can believe. He said, all things. Now, he was trying to pass the responsibility back onto Jesus. Immediately Jesus said, no, no, no. If you can believe, all things are possible to him. It's not me. Me, I'm ready. Hallelujah. God is able. God is willing. And God is ready. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 69 says, you know, God looks to and fro. His eyes go to and fro on the heart. Looking for who? Whose heart is perfect. Hallelujah. He wants to show himself strong. He wants to manifest his power. He's looking for someone whose heart is connected. Whose faith? And where is faith? Faith is in the heart. So God is looking. You know, uh, Jeremiah uh, 1 12. He says, I watch over my words to perform it. Hallelujah. So God is alert. It's, it's like he's having, God doesn't sleep, right? He doesn't sleep nor slumber. So he's awake. All the word he has released over 6,000 years is waiting. He's looking for someone who will stand on it and say, yes. Just keep saying it. And the power is working. King and walking. Hallelujah. People of God. I think I'll rest my case here. You have the God kind of faith. God is not the one doing miracles. He has done everything. He has released his word. The works were finished before the foundations of the heart. He is not doing 
anything. Hallelujah. He says, you make it come alive by your faith. When I realized that, I said, it is done. Hallelujah. But, you know, I used to think uh, when I get to heaven, I would say to Paul, Paul, yes, you know. But I realized, you know, by this scripture, by this revelation, when I get to heaven, I would say, Paul, I salute the grace. Paul too would say, oh, brother Cole, I salute the grace on your life. Hallelujah. Amen. All things are possible to him that believes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Blessed by that ministration tonight. Come on, let me turn to your neighbor and say, All things are possible. Come on, tell your neighbor, By your faith, you can run over a wall. By your faith, you can leap over a troop. Hallelujah. You can overcome. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. Even your faith. Hallelujah. Are you ready tonight? Listen to me. We're in for a marathon of the word. Is your spirit ready? Spirit hungry tonight. Are you ready for more word? Are you ready for more word? Come on, just say this to me. Father, we thank you for revelation knowledge will flow freely and unhindered by any satanic or demonic forces. We declare, sweet Holy Spirit, have your way in this place. Open our eyes to see. Open our ears to hear. Let our hearts receive your word and the impartation of your spirit. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please welcome with me tonight to preach God's word, Pastor Ryan Jewish. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Come on, put your hands together. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Pastor Kunle said it is done. So I was wondering, it's done. I'll just take the mic and give it back to Pastor Emmy. I say, it is done. My 20 minutes is over. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I, the message I listened to while I was on campus, um, The Just Shall Live by Faith by Kofodola. And um, it, it was, I think it was during um, Papi Southwest Believers Conference. And after he, he preached, um, Gloria Copeland came, no, Kenneth Copeland came on stage, I think one of, one of the two of them came on stage and said, uh, I think Gloria Copeland came on stage and said, there's nothing left to preach. He said, okay, Flo, because if you listen to that today, it's as if, what is that again to preach about the subject of faith? And, Ken, and Kenneth Copeland said, he said, the subject of faith is an inexhaustible topic. It's an inexhaustible um, topic, subject. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm sure if we call Pastor Kunle up now to teach about faith, you will see another side to it. Hallelujah. Because it's inexhaustible. Because we are talking about faith in a God that is inexhaustible. Faith in a God that is bottomless, as in how I describe God. Hallelujah. As in, you can't say um, God, God began at so 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 time. No. God, 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 God. God began, as in it, it, it doesn't have a beginning, it doesn't have an end, hallelujah, that is the kind of God that we serve, hallelujah, the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 10 verse 17, it says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God, hallelujah, in four different places in the Bible, it refers to the, the just. How many righteous people do I have in the house? It refers to the fact that the just shall live by faith. Hallelujah. The just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. And that is what we've heard this evening. The just shall live by faith. But Romans 10, 7 it makes us understand that no word, no faith. Hallelujah. No word, no faith. It is not our faith in God is not faith but nothing. It is faith based on God's word to us. 
Hallelujah. It is faith based on God's word to us. It is faith based on God's word to you. Whatever you might be going through, until the word of God becomes personal. Until the word becomes personal. Until the word becomes rema to you where the situation is concerned. Then you've, as in, it's like you are still scratching the soil. Hallelujah. Until the, you need to let the word become personal. So that the faith in your heart can rise up and respond to take the promise that God has made to you. Hallelujah. No word, no faith. Jesus said in the book of John chapter 6, I think verse 63. He says, the word that I speak to you. They are spirit and they are life. Notice he didn't say the words that I speak to the person next to you. The word that I speak to you. I'm, I'm talking place of the word in the life of a believer. Enough of, of uh, generalizing. Oh, uh, some people try to do it in the Bible. The seven sons of Skipper. They says in the name of Jesus whom Paul preached. And they got the, the, um, they got the repercussion of it. Because they didn't realize that as in, in, in Acts chapter, I think 3, when Peter and John took that, that man at the, at the gate of beautiful and, and again, they said something. They said, it, you guys are responding to us as if it is of our power that we have made this man old. He said, it is the name of Jesus and faith in his name. It was a revelation. There was a time I was meditating on, on, on that on that on that on those scriptures. And it dawned on me, I said, as it dawned on me that there's something that I if I if I don't have anything else, I have the name of Jesus. In, in sometime in 2010, I was in then we're still at our former place, and uh, Pastor Otto was preaching and, and God told me something. He said, What do you he asked me a question? He said, What do you have? And I thought he was referring to financial seed. So I looked at my but then I was a student, so I looked at my point, I said, oh God, this is what I have. Maybe five or ten pounds or one one um, insignificant amount. And I noticed I didn't get any response. So some days later I had the same question, what do you have? And I was like, ah. for this question to come again, that means my first answer was not correct. Then one day the question came again and it says me tell you what you have. He said, one, you have the word of God. He said, two, you have the name of Jesus. He said, three, you have the Holy Spirit sent to indwell you, to lead you, and to guide you to all truth. He said, four, you have ministry spirits sent forth to minister for them which shall be heirs of salvation. He said, see, the things that you see, the, tangi the tangible things that you see were not made of the things which do appear. They were made by the word of God. So if, for example, you need something that is tangible, does not exist, from the word of God, it says, you lay hold of the intangib in intangibility of the word of God. Stay with that intangible word and stay with it. Let it produce the tangibilities that you need in your life. Hallelujah. As in, I, 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 based on natural uh, circumstances, I, I will probably have missed my my session tomorrow but I, but I called Pastor Amy and I said Pastor Amy you know what my faith is out I'm meant to be at work from as in during that period my faith is out can you agree with me and right prayed I went to I, I, at that point I had gone to every of my colleagues to say can you can you cover this period I said no I can't some of them said oh, I've got parties oh no I can't I've got parties no I've got and all that and someone 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 kept coming in my mind but I was like I don't really feel okay going to this person. And I went to my manager. My manager said, ah, you know what? You need to look for somebody to cover that, that time period. And I just called this person. I said, you know what? Could you do this for me? This person only works on Saturdays. She any other day of the week. She has never done any other period of time except mornings. And I said, could you, could you cover this period for me? She said, ah, that's a big ask. He said, because I have my niece's birthday is that day. I said, okay. 
And I've learned something from when you're working with God. When people give you things like that, I'm like, you know what? I won't say, oh, you know what? Don't worry. No. I'll wait there. I said, well, I said, and she said, you know what? Let me call you back. I said, okay. And almost immediately she called me back. She said, you know what? I'll do it. And that was how it was covered. The word works. Hallelujah. See, uh, I, I, wrote, I, wrote some, I wrote something down here. I said, the Bible says in the book of 1 Peter 1 23, it says we were born of the incorruptible word of God. There's a, there's a law of life. The source of a thing is the sustenance of that thing. If we were born of the word of God, then what the word of God has to be our life and our sustenance. We can't live any other way. There's no option. I've been in numerous situations where, from the natural point of view, as in, I, I didn't know what next to do. But something deep inside of me that has been said to just knows that, you know, when it seems there's no answer, that means there's an answer somewhere. That means the word of God is, is as in, God said something about, about Adam. He said, it's not good for man to be alone. He said, I will make him an help, meet for him. And when he dawned on me, he said, even if they don't exist, God will create it. And that's what the word of God does. Even if the help that you need does not exist, the word of God that you stay with will produce that help, even if it does not exist. I'll, I'll narrow in on Hebrews 4.12. Just for you to understand what the word of God does in the life of a believer. Who pays attention? Proverbs 4, Proverbs 4, Proverbs 4 from verse 20 says, My son, attend to my word. That's, all, that's, that, that's always the issue. Attention. What do we pay attention to? It says, My son, attend to my words. Incline your ears. That mean, incline your ears means... You have to do something deliberately to away from something to something else. It says, incline your word, your ears to my saints. Do not let them depart from your heart. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those that find them. Look at what it says. Attend to my words. Incline your ears. Do not let them depart from before your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. So he's telling us, see, we need to get to a point where the word of God gets our attention, our ears, our eyes, every part of us. See, you want, as in, you've heard the Bible of the sower taught many times. You know, in each, as in, for, for a while, I always thought that um, the first kind of ground, um, I can't, as in, whichever one, let's say the, the tiny one, was the one that produced 30 fold. Then the, the uh, stony ground produced 60 fold. Then the good ground produced 100. How many of you have thought about that? No, no, no. The stony ground did not produce anything. The thorny one did not produce anything. The one that produced, as in that, that, that God gave the option of incremental growth, is the ground that is the good ground. It is, see, with the measure with which you meet, it will be measured back to you. So he's saying the level of attention that you give to the word will mean the juice that the word will pour back into your life. Hallelujah. As, as in, I can, never for, I, can, I can never forget, as in, before I go into the, that, as in that testimony to end, Hebrews 4.12, it says the word of God is quick and powerful sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of the spirit and the soul and of the joints and the marrows and is a discerner of the intent of the heart verse 13 it says and nothing is hid from his presence you know what that means that means that the word of god has the capacity to penetrate whichever way your spirit your soul and your body joints and marrows that whatever they, they might have said is wrong with your body with your bones with your marrows with your mind your will your you, you know the way the doctors are when they can't explain something they they just um, 
when they can't engage some look for something, as in they just look for a way to cover up their ignorance. Sorry, doctors in the house. They look for something to cover there. But see, the word of God does not look for a way to cover its ignorance because there's no ignorance with the word. The word of God says, is that a problem? Is it a mental problem? Is it a physical problem? Is it incurable? He said, you stay with the word. You stay with the word. Let it go in through your eyes, through your ears, through your mouth. See, Jesus said, the words that I speak to you, not the words that I speak to the person next to you. He says, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. It will give life to whatever is dead. That's what it means. It will, Jesus says something in John 10, he says, the thief come to, no, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy, but I have come that you may have life and have you more abundantly. You know what that means? He says, I have come that you will have a life where there's no stealing, no killing, no destruction. So he's saying that if, if Jesus said, the words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life, that means he's saying, you stay with the word. And when the life in the word comes out, whatever presents stealing, killing, or destruction will be annihilated. It will cease to exist. Hey! I, I, as in, as in, I, I, uh, one aspect of my life that I have had on, on unprecedented success is where my health is concerned. I can't remember. I used to read it in Egan books. I can't remember the last time I fell ill. Even if you saw me and you think I was ill, I can't remember. But I can remember the time that I was, as in, I said, you know what? I need to make this word work. In 1996, I was shivering. I was feverish. I, I sat down with the word. My mom came into the room and said, you know, I understand. He said, but why don't you use, you know, is that a uh, chloroquine or nevaquine? All the ones that eat, that you now use pedicin so that you will sleep while it is itching. Not that the itchy, it takes itching away, but why is it? I said, you know what? I know I've used I've used it. He said, but I need to make this thing work. I need to work the word. So I sat down, I, I laid down there, I was shivering. And I said, by the stripes of Jesus, we were healed. If we were healed, then I was healed. If I was healed, then I'm still healed. I'm not the sick trying to be healed. I'm the healed maintaining my health. Now, I didn't say this, this clear because you know when you are sick, you don't, in <laughs> oh, Jesus, as in your voice shakes. That was the way it was then. And I kept saying it for hours. I kept saying it. My mom would come into the room. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, he just left. Ah, I jumped up. I said, ha, ha, ha. It was like, I looked. So, someone said, fear knocked. Faith answered. And there was nobody at the door. Fear knocked. Faith answered. And there was no. So I looked for the devil and I couldn't find him. I looked for sickness and I couldn't find it. So I got into uni. And they knew me as the as in the man of the word who taught, on, particularly when it comes to the triune nature of man, um, healing and all that. So there was this. Um, I was a sm um, small group leader at some point, and they said, and, and the person who was in charge of all the small group leaders said, you know what? Since you are very good at teaching divine healing, why don't you teach all the small group nineteen small group leaders? So that they can go to their small house fellowship and teach the people. I said, Ah, I love you. Read the manual. And I went there and I taught it. Ah, fire. On the way home, I can still remember the place in front of an Olaja estate. You, you, you know the place. <laughs> uh, for those of you listening, by, by, uh, you listening online, it's, um, it's, it's a student hostel. Maybe I should have said it in a, in a two way. A breeze, I was, I was on a bike going home after teaching the small group leaders and a breeze just hit me from the maybe north wind or south wind. It just hit me. And instantly, I started shivering. As I started shivering, you know what I did? I just started laughing. <laughs> I said an opportunity for me to prove the devil that he is still defeated. I went home. I told one of my flatmates, 
I said, you know what? There is still in my fridge. Cook rice. This is my key. Come into my room gently. Take the stew, whatever you want. He said, what's happening? I said, I have something to deal with. I said, don't disturb me. I laid on my bed. And I said, ah, by the stripes of Jesus, we were healed. If we were healed, then I was healed. If I was healed, then I'm still healed. So I'm not the sick trying to be healed. I'm the healed maintaining my health. And I kept saying it, and I kept saying it. One hour, all of a sudden, I just noticed, I just woke up. That means I, I said it and I slept off. And I looked at the time, it was about three hours. And when I woke up, the bed was soaked with water. And I woke up completely healed. What happened? The word of God is quick and powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing to you might have a situation right now that has, as in that has something to do with your emotions or your feelings or your mind or your reasoning. The word of God has the capacity to pierce even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit. I, as in a lot of people, if I say this, I, in 1996-97, I had very low self-esteem. Does, does it look like me? Somebody, somebody said that. <laughs> As in, I had very low self-esteem. And I got, but 1996, December 31 was when I dedicated my life to God. And 2000, I mean, 1997, as in, I just went 100% for the word. I would study God's word all night. I would meditate all night. I would pray all night. As in, it was as if I was just hungry. I was just, well, when I got my first amplified, just bought everything, read everything, even the ones I was not meant to read, read deliver from the power of darkness that I was not supposed to. I, 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 but I dove into it. All of a sudden, two years later, I just, I just thought, I said, I used to have a problem. I used to have low self-esteem. What happened? Where is it? It just dawned on me. It had gone. Why? Because the word of God had penetrated my soul. Had treated the part of me that medical world or the natural man could not penetrate. The word of God that is quick and powerful, that is sharper than any stranger's sword, had penetrated and completely removed what was not there by the person who made me. Ah, let, let, let me enjoy us. See, some of us, there's, there are some people, when I, when I was preparing for this, some, someone kept coming to, to my heart. You keep wondering, this word, I've been hearing it, but where, when is it going to produce? When is it going to produce? And, and what I heard God tell me was this. He said, you only come on Sunday, that the only time you hear God's word is when you come on Sunday. Tell me, how is it going to work? You come on Sunday, you hear the word. The moment you step out, see, the devil is, is waiting. He's got numerous things from newspaper to the news to the media to, to TV to friends to whatever. He's got things ready. And the only time you hear the word is on Sunday. Then you come back the following Sunday and you wonder, why is it not working? God is saying, pay attention. Turn off the TV. Turn off Facebook. Turn off whatever you know is distracting you. Because, see, if you are born again, your spirit knows that God's word works. Turn off what you need to turn off and pay attention. Proverbs 4, my son, attend to my word. Incline your ears to my sayings. Keep them before your eyes. Do not let them depart from your heart. For they are life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. God says something in Isaiah 55, 11. He says, the words, my words do not return to me void. 
the word always works. Pay attention to it and let the life in the word come out and cause us to experience a life where there's no stealing, no killing, and no destruction. Hallelujah. Let's lift up our hands and appreciate God. Jesus at the center of it all. Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning to the end, it will always be. It's always been. you tonight we exalt you tonight we give you glory tonight I declare in the name of Jesus that every contrary situation is being turned around everything that man has said is impossible I declare it's becoming possible before your very eyes in the name of Jesus I declare where they have stopped and even hindered you stepping into solutions I declare those same people will come to your aid in the name of Jesus I declare the people that have told you there is no way will come and say we have found a way in the name of Jesus we declare tonight Lord that all things are working together for our good in the name of Jesus hallelujah 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 Hallelujah. We come against every opposition to victory tonight. We declare breakthrough side. We declare increase on every side. We declare that the doors that have been shut to us have been opened to us right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we give you praise. 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 You are the God of all possibilities. Nothing is too hard for you to do. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you glory. Oh, God knows how to meet any need. You know, there was a day about almost a year ago, somebody came to the very first time. Before she came to church, she was saying, God, when I get to that church, I want to know in that service that this is where you want me to be. I don't want to have to come several times before I discover 
your will where you know being planted in this church is concerned that day i don't remember what it was i was preaching by the end of the service i said to people if you have a situation in your life you need the intervention of god something urgent come forward it was her first time but she had something in her life hallelujah she did a breakthrough from god amen some bills needed to be paid and there was no money to be found to pay those bills but she came forward the hands were laid on people hallelujah and then suddenly the money that was needed just showed up in the account on friday and all the bills all the things that were behind they were behind on the family was able to pay off all those bills and come out on top hallelujah god knew that she was coming to that service god had sent his power to deliver her from that oppression even before she decided to come hallelujah and even though it was her first time she was able to break in to receive what god had in store for her hallelujah you know before she came to that service it was like god i'm looking to you you know we need something here if you don't show up we're going to be god showed up hallelujah come let me turn to your neighbor and say god always shows up hallelujah god always turns up and god always turns up on time hallelujah amen were you blessed by pastor ryan's ministration glory to god hallelujah my heart and my spirit are indicted in a good matter hallelujah i believe god that over this weekend we're going to hear god's word again and again our minds will be so renewed hallelujah that nothing will stop you hallelujah you will become greater or stronger than a locomotive hallelujah come faster than a speeding bullet hallelujah glory to god nothing will stop you because greater is he that is in you and he that is in the world hallelujah you know the bible says with men it is impossible oh i love what the man of god said he said you go to certain people in certain heights you know of expertise and professionalism in certain fields rather than them to say they don't know they will say it is impossible rather than them to agree that they are ignorant <laughs> they won't agree that they are ignorant they, i am the expert in this field and i have told you that you cannot be cured of this infirmity so rather than say we are ignorant they say it is incurable no there's nothing that is not there's not curable yes, sir. you are just ignorant of how to bring about a cure and somebody listen to me tonight yes. I was watching a documentary. Somebody wanted to build a uh, fuel station and he wanted it to look like an airplane. And so the builders wanted to put pillars under the wings and the architect said, if you put pillars under this wing, I will burn the place So they decided to listen to him and they did not put pillars and it is still standing. From the 40s, it is still standing like an airplane, fuel station like an airplane. The builders could not see it. They were expert builders, but they could not see what the architect could see. So they were saying it needs pillars to stand. If I remember, uh, Bishop David Oyedepo was building, you know, Winner's Chapel, the Faith Tabernacle. We said we want to build it without pillars. They said there is no way you can build this structure without having pillars everywhere in the church. He kept firing the, and firing all of them until he found someone that said we can do it. It is possible. It is possible. There will always be people, the bankers will tell you, you cannot succeed without getting a loan from the bank. You can't run this business. They will tell you, in your lifetime, you cannot come out of this debt. It's a lie. It's a lie. They have gotten to the end of their own knowledge. They have gotten to the end of their own ability. So they have now come to the conclusion that it is impossible. The employer will tell you it is not possible to increase your salary. There is something wrong with the business this year. We are not making ends meet. So we cannot give you a promotion. It is a lie. Hallelujah. For promotion does not come from the north or the south or the east or the west. Promotion comes from the Lord. When men say there is a casting down, we say what? There is a lifting up. All things are possible. Listen to me, it doesn't matter what the field is, the experts, when you get to the top, they will tell you, certain things are not possible. What they are trying to explain to you, ladies and gentlemen, is I don't do it. <laughs> I do not know how to do it. I do not know how to do it. But they will, they will never admit, hallelujah. Because, you know, they are on the front of Time Magazine, they are the experts in that field. They don't want Time Magazine to comment that this person has suddenly realized that they are ignorant about a subject. Hallelujah. I love Kenny Higgins' definition of theory. He said that uh, 
theory is the uh, is the is the uh, which it is uh, it just is this the declaration of ignorance in the subject of the matter yes so basically because we do not because we do not know we will then give you a theory about the subject matter I, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying I mean if you were in science class I mistakenly went to science class you understand I should have gone to arts or social sciences but somehow I followed the crowd and I ended up in sciences you know when I was doing my final year exams I was just thinking two weeks to the final exam I was thinking ah, how did I get here well, what am I doing I'm certainly not supposed to be here I, I, like the prodigal son, I came to myself, but it was too late. The exams were in two weeks. I couldn't change the subjects, so I had to plow through by grace, <laughs> by grace. So look, as they come up with theories, okay, let's let's write this and let's see if we can now test it to see if it works, to see if it's correct, to see if it's true. But a lot of men do not know the way. They don't know the way. Oh, I was listening. We were watching. The news yesterday or maybe two days ago it was on tv and they were talking about people in suicide and then they showed this man talking about his daughter 44 years old you know took her life and i, I thought they were going to say something quite dramatic and they were like she was going to be made redundant ah ah there's some people there they are serial redundancy Redundancy uh, agents so or serial redundancy candidates. Everywhere they've walked, they've made them redundant. They are still alive today. So the living, there is hope. Hallelujah. There is hope. There is hope. I was like, how did you get to that place where you felt there was no hope? It's because with man, it is not possible. With man, it is not possible. I was like, oh, that she went to a meeting and somebody preached about the ability of God. She would have had hope. Fire would have been ignited in her heart and she may be alive today. Listen to me. Don't let men stop you. Men, you know, yesterday or the day before, I was just flipping through Twitter and I saw this uh, article or link to, to a YouTube video that Pastor Sunday Adelaja put from Ukraine and it was about this young chap when he was born he was born with sweaty palms he always found it very difficult to use touch phones right and so he decided that he's going to create a phone that he doesn't have to touch to operate and everybody was saying you are crazy you are mad who has ever heard of such a phone the apples have not done it the Samsung's have not done it and you're talking about a phone that you can control without touching now can you imagine a phone that you can control without touching touchless you know so it's touch screen the, it's touchless. No, I know it's a stylus. No, no, I'm not talking about stylus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so this guy started. Hallelujah. Started in the final year of university. Decided I might as well use it as my university project. He, dis he created using parts that he got from different phones, different because he didn't have enough money to invest in getting brand new parts. So he picked parts from here and there and designed a phone that you don't need to touch. Now, so that you don't just think it was showing pictures. The video is on YouTube. <laughs> I don't know the technology, but essentially, I believe, going to Mr. Kemi, that he uses air pressure. So the guy made a phone call, right? With the video, everything, no film trick on YouTube. And so when he got to the end of the video, he was essentially saying, I'm not saying this because I want you to be tripped up by what I've done. He says, I want to inspire you that there's nothing impossible for you to do, that you can achieve anything you set your mind to. Don't let people, the family, the friends, everybody said it's not possible. But the guy set his mind to it. And then he was now appreciating all the motivation. Yeah, appreciating all motivational speakers at the end. You know, some of the names I've come across in, in my short life. And I thought, this guy, people told him it is not possible. They told him it can't be done. You are crazy. He touched less phone. I don't know how much he's going to make from that patent. Well, he just did it in, in 2015. 2015. 2015. 2015. With man. It is impossible. For no we God. No we God. No we God. Listen to me, people that are more senior to you, more experienced than you, more qualified, might have child. It doesn't mean that you don't have the answer. It doesn't mean you don't have the solution. 
with many might be impossible but that doesn't mean that it's an end to you nobody might have done it before your time hallelujah it's time for you to go down in history books as the first is somebody listening to me tonight it's time for you to go down in history books as the first because with man it might not be possible but we got somebody say we got oh surgeons might say it's not possible eye specialists might say it's not possible recruitment agents might say it's not possible the government might say it's not possible oh i remember there was this law that the government had where immigration was concerned if you you know visa you couldn't apply here as a partner you had to go back to your home country and apply to join your partner or your spouse i remember that that particular rule in the immigration uh, rules was going to affect pastor buki or Agbade. And she decided that no, she's not going to go anywhere to go and apply. She's going to apply in this country. So she started praying, hallelujah. Just before it was time for the application to happen, they changed the rules. Somebody took the home office to court and they won and they changed the rules. <laughs> they changed the rules. With the government possible, but not with God. Before it was time to apply, God changed the rules. Ah, God knows how to change rules. He knows how to change rules. But it takes getting into a place of the word, a place of faith, and then we see the impossible, impossibility become possible. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what the system say, it's not possible. Come on, let me turn to your neighbor and say it's possible. It doesn't matter what your family has told you, it's not possible. Come on, let me say it's possible. It's possible. It's possible. Hey, the doctors will tell you uh, genotypes don't change, blood groups don't change, colors don't change, height doesn't change. Let me tell you what I say, it's possible. It's possible. It's possible. If you can find it in the word, it's possible. Uh, so don't be limited by man's limits because God is unlimited. You know, Jesus' mother came to him and said, they need wine. He said, why are you troubling me? He said, whatever he asks you to do, do it. Hallelujah. You know what he did? He turned water into wine. He turned water into wine. Listen to me. God is unlimited. God is unlimited. To create something for you, he will do it. Hallelujah. He will do it. God is unlimited. Even if it's wine you need, he will turn water into wine so that you can get the wine. Whatever God needs to change to provide for you because you believe in his ability to make that supply, he will change it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody say, I believe. And therefore, it is possible. You know, Pastor Kuni wrote my message. Hallelujah. He stole, you know, I'm sure I got there before him, so he must have taken it for me in the realm of the spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Psalm 91 verse 1. It says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the, more, of the Almighty. You know, he called him two things. He said, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High. El Elyon. Hallelujah. The Most High God. High above every situation and circumstance. High above every limit that exists. Hallelujah. High above it, high above systems, high above those in authority. Come on, somebody say it's the most high God. Most high God. Hallelujah. Amen. And then it said, and in the point, Almighty El Shaddai, the all sufficient God. Hallelujah. <laughs> he is the most high and he's the most sufficient. He is the most high and he's the most blessed. Glory to God. Hey, think about the richest man in the world. Think about the 10 richest men in the world. Put them all together. Like Pastor Kunis, they cannot even touch the tip of the wealth of God. Hallelujah. There is no limit to him. He has an unending abundance. An unending abundance. So let's go to Mark 9. And let's look at that together. In Mark chapter 9, Jesus was speaking to a man. Or well, let's read what happened to the man first. Acts chapter 9, Mark 9, from verse 18. And said, Wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth, and gnasheth with his teeth, and paineth away. And I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out. He could not. He answered him and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him to me. 
and they brought him to him and when he saw him straightway the spirit stared him and he fell on the ground and wallowed for me and he asked his father how long is it that this has come upon him and he said as of a child hallelujah listen to me you know the man came to jesus and you know the first thing he said he said i brought him to your disciples and they could do nothing so what he said nothing with men it is impossible they could do nothing you know, it's like your followers right? if you are what your salt your followers shall be able to do something about it i brought him to your followers i brought him to the doers of jesus christ i brought him to the those who obey jesus christ right because the disciples are meant to be from the same sheet as the master or the teacher i brought him to those who come from your loins and they could do nothing that's number one nothing so that's the first thing he presents to jesus there is no power no transformation no change amongst your followers and a lot of times people people think that god doesn't know do you know that matthew chapter 6 says before you even mention it to god god knows what it is that you want to talk to him about so he started telling jesus this is not a small case oh it's not a small case ah pastor let me tell you my case you've not heard my case before my case is very terrible <laughs> pastor anybody that's talked to you before about this thing their case is not as bad as my if i before i even start i just need to emphasize how bad my case is So that you can bow at the presence of my case. <laughs> Always go to emphasize how terrible the situation is. And that's what the man did. Do you see what he said to Jesus? A, your disciples could do nothing. B, it has troubled him from childhood. So this spirit did not just come last week. This spirit has settled. You understand? The spirit has really and they are all running around so he throws him into the fire when the child is having a tantrum throws him into the water amen now all those things are not in the scripture amen but i'm helping you here because the spirit has been there from childhood so it is not a small case <laughs> come on somebody say with man it is impossible you see god already knows the details of the case you don't need to start reminding him how long lord you know how long i've waited he knows hallelujah listen to me one day god gave me a revelation of hebrew 12 2. he says he is the author and the father of what faith. of whose faith? faith of your faith <clears throat> that means that the day you decided to start that work of faith he was there with you he was there with you and what is he going to do he's the finisher of that faith hallelujah he is there at the beginning when you decided the work of faith is there with you at the end when you complete it walking with you through the way so don't think that god has left you to walk in faith on your own god has been there the whole time he is the author and the finisher of your faith he's there he's there walking the walk with you leading you giving you instructions showing you how to walk the path so that you can fulfill your assignment hallelujah helping you out fulfilling the ministry glory to god glory to god hallelujah praise god forevermore he's helping you supporting you guiding you glory to god so don't be afraid don't be asking god where are you have you not seen how much i've suffered god has been there from day one the author and the finisher of your faith someone was there when i got saved god will be there when i make it to heaven hallelujah praise god yes but it's more than that there isn't any faith project that god didn't start with you if you are in his will hallelujah is somebody still here shout hallelujah. hallelujah glory to god i need to bring this to a close but then he went on verse 22 and oftentimes it had cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him <laughs> look at this but if thou canst do anything because your disciples could do nothing so if your master can do anything have compassion on us and help us and jesus said to him if thou canst believe all things are possible to him that believes listen to me it might be a long history of asthma it might be hereditary hallelujah 
said since childhood, it doesn't matter. He said this woman of daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound these 18 years. He said, How long has he been lame? He said, since he was born. Ah, it doesn't matter how long the situation, it doesn't matter if it's hereditary, hallelujah. It can be but then if he can do anything, so he now got to a place where he had questioned the ability of the disciples, it was not questioning the ability of God. Listen to me, the fact that the doctor says it's incurable doesn't mean that God and the doctor are in the same boat. The fact that the bank has told you that they cannot help you does not mean that you are without help. Listen to me, when people, when people really know God, they, sh- they should not need to declare bankruptcy. Because what, ah, did God send them on that errand? A limitless God? That die? The all-sufficient one? Could not restore? Could not provide? Could not bring you out? What are you talking about? Pastor Kule said they were slaves. And God told them, go and collect. The creditors were coming to take our children. He said, go and borrow verses of the few. He said, the axe head, alas, it was borrowed. And it did float. God can provide. God can deliver from any situation whatsoever. Jesus looked at him. <laughs> you know, where you put your commas makes a lot of difference. You realize that? Look at this. Mark 9.23. Right? Say, okay, before I go there, it says, if you can do anything, he put God in man's position, doubting God's ability. He put Jesus in the position of the disciples. Right? Look at this. Jesus said to him, let's put the comma after can. Right? You need to understand this. You know, the Bible says in verse 24, the man said, ah! help down my own belief look at this the man said if you can if you can do anything help us have mercy on us Jesus looked at him listen to me everyone just again said if you can if you can are you, are you asking me if you can are you asking me that question believe don't ask me if I can if you can believe all things are possible to him that believes. That's what Pastor Colin was saying. It's not if God can. God can. God has the ability. And God is willing to do it. But he told him, he said, if you can. What, what, what question is that? Believe. You believe. All things are possible to him that believes. He said, ah. Master, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Help down my, I believe, help down my own belief. Because if you read his response, you'll be wondering, why is the response so dramatic to what Jesus said? It's because Jesus looked at him, what, what are you asking me? If I can? What do you mean by if I can? Are you comparing me to the disciples? He said, oh, faithless generation, how long will I stay here with you? If I can? No, you believe. You believe. You believe. You believe. The situation can change. You need to believe. Don't say, God, can you turn this situation around? Don't, don't. Say, can this dry bones live again? Don't, don't ask God if you can. He can. He can. He can. Oh yeah. He can. Moses said, who will I say send to you? Me. He said, I am. I am. Hallelujah. And he has not changed. Amen. Hebrews 11, 6. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. For anyone who comes to God must believe that He is. Must believe that He, I am. Hallelujah. He has not changed His name. Glory to God. Hebrews 13 is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So don't ask me if I can. Believe. Believe. Do you know what Jesus did there? In Mark 9:23. And Mark 10 27, Jesus gave us an equation. He that believes is equal to with God. Mm. Mm, Selah. Mark 9 23. All things are possible to him that believes. Mark 10 27. With God, all things are possible. What, are, what, what is different? 
him that believes with God him that believes with God he that believes is with God hallelujah he that believes is with God I believe when I walk into that situation believing I am not going in my own strength or in my own power or in my own ability in my expertise my background my education my knowledge my finances I'm walking into that situation believing I am going there with God's resources I'm going there with God's limited limitless opportunities I am going there with God's all sufficiency hallelujah I'm not going there on my own no I'm going there with the ability that God provides all that God is all that God has and all that God can do because of who he is and what he has not in my own strength not in my own power not in my own ability hallelujah because when I believe I am with God when I believe God when I believe I am with God when I believe I am with God so when the Bible says with God all things are possible hallelujah he's saying all things are possible to him that believes because when we believe when we believe when we believe when we believe hallelujah when we believe we will see the manifestation of God when we believe we will see the power of God when we believe hallelujah when we believe when we believe we believe all things not a few not all things but one thing all things all things not one or two things some people read all things and they say ah god can deal with finances god can deal with health you know one day while uh jerry sabel was still very young he went to a kenokopla meeting he had had kenokopla before he had gone to study the word of god on healing like pastor ryan was saying he had got he had dig deep into god's word on healing and he had received the revelation on divine health and he knew that he could never be sick another day in his life so he went back kenokopla came back to and then when kenokopla came back to preach he said ah i now know what god's word says about healing and divine health i know i would never be sick another day in my life now you need to talk to me about this money business and the corporal said, the same way you got a revelation on divine health and healing, that's the same way you can get revelation on supernatural supply, on divine finances. And he said, let me tell you one other thing. God has done everything he's going to do about your finances. <laughs> Jesus, I said, what? What did you say? Eh? What? He's done what? What do you mean he's done to do about my finances? But he has, hallelujah. Yeah. Everything you need to know is in the world. You know, today, Dr. K has got two beautiful children. Eh? Two beautiful kids. But the doctors told him it is impossible. Eh? It was impossible. Hallelujah. The doctor said, you cannot have kids. They checked. Checked the man. Checked the woman. They said, man, there is a problem. Man, the problem is with you. You cannot have kids. Dr. K said, fine. That same day, somebody said that same day. That same day he went into the house and he grabbed the Bible and he went to the scriptures. Hallelujah. Listen to me. If the word of God is potent enough to bring your dead spirit back to life, it's potent enough to give pregnancy to women. Hallelujah. That same day he went home and he went through the word, spent some time with the word. Amen. And then he sowed the seed. And when it was time, they went to the doctor and the doctor said, Ah, Pastor May is pregnant. Hallelujah. And when they checked the time of life, Mm. when they check the time of life it was the day he received the incorruptible seed so it was not corruptible seed that was planted hallelujah it was incorruptible seed that was planted it was the word of God that brought life in that womb and just to show you that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that the doctors can say and do he gave them a boy first and then brought a girl later hallelujah then they themselves say enough is enough hallelujah they are the ones that decided that it is okay not the doctors not the gynecologists not the sperm experts or the gene experts not any expert hallelujah they made that decision glory to god is somebody still here tonight God is able to do exceedingly 
abundantly above all that you can ask or think hallelujah we need to believe we need to believe come on let me turn to your neighbor and say do you believe 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 i be i believe i believe all things are possible 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 come on can you just rise to your feet tonight and just pray in the holy ghost all things are possible let's pray in the holy ghost tonight pray in the holy ghost tonight all things are possible all things are possible all things are possible every situation is turning around in the favor of the word of god every situation is turning around for every member of king's world international church london for everyone who is watching and listening online all things are working together for your good all things are possible every situation is working for your good every situation is working for your good every situation is working for your good this is our year of his fullness. All things are possible. All things are possible. All things are possible. God can touch every area of your life. No area of your life should be left untouched. No area of your life should be left untouched. No area of your life should be left untouched. All things are possible. All things are possible. All things are possible. That contract is possible. That house is possible. That baby is possible. That marriage is possible. Hey, Kala Gasse say do so. That healing is possible. Kela Nande say kere bogodoso. Coming back home is possible. Kela Gasse say do so. Mande kere kere bogodoso. That child, that son coming back home is possible all things are possible all things are possible all things are possible that incurable disease is curable with god it is curable with god there is a solution with god there is hope with god there is transformation come on release your faith release your faith father we give you praise Father, we give you praise. 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 Come on, praise the Lord tonight. Praise Him for His Word. 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 And that's coming to your heart afresh. Praise Him for His Word. For the entrance of the word, give it light and understanding to the simple heart. For the word is a lamp unto your feet and a light to your path. Every form of darkness is dispelled at the presence of the word. Hey, we commend ourselves to your word of grace. Able to build us up and give us an inheritance among those who are sanctified. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you glory. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Thank you because your word is breaking forth in every heart. Discerning and dividing spirit and soul, bone and marrow. Is discerning the intents and the thoughts of the heart and renewing the minds of men and saving their souls. And delivering them to all forms of prosperity. Spirit, soul and body. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you praise. Hallelujah. 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 Listen to me. I believe that there is a plan of God for your life where these meetings are concerned. I want to encourage you to tap into what God is saying in these meetings to you. Tap into the word that God is speaking into your life and your destiny. Lay hold on that word. Declare that word. Decree that word. Receive the word. And let your life not be the same. Let your life not be the same. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. All right. You can have your seats very briefly. We'll soon be out of here tonight. Father, we give you praise. Ushers, please, can you pass around the envelopes tonight so that we can give glory to God. I want you to sow these seeds over this weekend into situations that need to change, situations that need to turn around. Hallelujah.
So we see tonight and release your faith for a transformation. So we see tonight and release your faith for a breakthrough, for open doors, for open doors. So many words have gone ahead of you. It's time for you to break forth into your manifestation. So many words have gone ahead of you. It's time for you to break forth in the name of Jesus. So many words have gone ahead of you. It's time for you to break forth. It's time for you to break forth. It's time for you to break forth. Kela gase sele do so. Man de kela go su su kele brogodo so. Shen de kela go su su kala gase. Man de le brogodo su su kele brogedes. Shere gede gedo su su kala gase. Man de le brogodo so. Shere gede gedo so. Len de kela go su su bredis. Man de kela go so. Kela gase sele gede gedes. Len brogodo su su kele bosho. Kela nande se sele do so. Kandele brarabasa. The chains of opposition have been broken. The chains of limitation have been broken. What men have said to you is not possible. I declare in the name of Jesus that I will give you a word. And you will see the possibilities come alive before your eyes. I will give you a word and you will see the possibilities come alive in your heart. What you could not see before will suddenly become clear. What was dark before will suddenly become bright with light. For my light will shine through the word and you will see the way and know that all things are possible. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you praise. We are changed in your presence from glory to glory by your spirit as we behold your word glory to god let's rise to our feet tonight as we give father we give you glory 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 come and declare god's word concerning your seat tonight and send your seat on an assignment all things are possible all things are possible all things are possible financial situations are being turned around financial situations are being turned around all things are possible all things are possible father we give you praise for tonight in the name of jesus and as we sow our seed i declare that every need is met i declare that every situation experiences an impute of the power of god's grace and anointing and turns that situation around and brings progress and brings increase and brings transformation in the name of jesus father we give you all the praise father we give you all the glory in jesus mighty name Amen. hallelujah glory to god please show your seats so tonight you can have your seat glory to god praise god forevermore glory to god you know while i was preaching he sent me a note please you can have your seat tonight please let's sow our seeds amen praise god forevermore i just wanted to share with you tonight that even though just you know so many of us are here tonight here in london there are people who have joined us tonight from the u.s people joined us from china people joined us from argentina people watching from indonesia people watching from south korea people watching from vietnam hallelujah glory to god glory to god a supernatural army is being raised amen all over the world hallelujah glory to god so thank you for joining us tonight we believe you've been blessed we're back tomorrow 5 p.m uk time it's going to be an awesome time listen to me by the time god is true with you this weekend you will be on fire hallelujah you will be on fire hallelujah look if you are not on fire by then i'll come and pour the oil and light you myself hallelujah glory to god glory to god let's rise to our feet as we close father we thank you for tonight's meeting we thank you lord for revelation knowledge that has come holy spirit we are open to you continue to breathe Live these words. We come back tomorrow, 5 p.m. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because you'll be here waiting with a great manifestation of your presence. We give you all the praise for these three days. We know that all things are possible. All things are possible. We give you all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. God bless you, and I will see you tomorrow at 5 p.m. Amen. Have a great night. Hallelujah. God bless.